Good morning, friends. It is Monday. A lot of you ask me how I get so much done. This is 4.13 a.m. <laughs> this is what I have to do. I don't get up this early every day, you guys. Maybe like three days a week. Um, and the other two, I usually sleep in till six. I know to some of you that's absurd, but for me, I've been a morning person literally since I was a child. I can remember getting up before the sun at like 10 years old, so... 4.13 a.m. I'm going to try to get like 20 to, no, probably like 30 to 50 items photographed. And then I send some to my lister and then I list the rest myself. I'm going to try to get that all done before this little guy wakes up at 6. He's very much like his mother. He wakes up very early. He's also a morning person for now. We'll see. That could change. He's 3. But uh, he wakes up first, then the 10-month-old, so... I've got probably two hours to get as much photographed as possible. So honestly, in two hours, I could photograph 50 and then send like 30 to the lister and list maybe 10 to 15 myself, but we shall All see. All right, friends. So on that day, I ended up getting 60 items photographed. I was very happy with that. And now we are at the thrift store. This is $2 day. It used to be $1, but it is now $2 day. Um, at this point, I think I realized my phone camera was dirty, so I cleaned it. Look at how much better that is. So every Thursday, one color of the week is uh, $2. And I think on this day, it was either yellow or blue. I will show you in a minute. But one of you asked me, you said, oh, I'm confused. I thought when you said color of the week, it meant like the color of the clothing item. No, you see the colors of these tags. So every week they rotate the color um, and that color tag is $2. I started out in the pants section. It is really difficult to film on um, $2 day, you guys, because it's a very busy day, especially like in the mornings and then in the evenings, um, basically, like when people are off work. So <laughs> that's why I'm like right up on the tags. But you can see I was finding like a lot of Liz Claiborne, a lot of um, dated styles, Jones, New York. That always holds a special place in my heart because believe it or not, friends, I tell you this all the time, pre-pandemic, I used to make really good money selling a lot of um, workwear from like Jones, New York, Inc. and International Concepts. I have been the worst at promoting my live sales. So if you would like to come and check out the live sales, I am having quite a few this week. I always link them in the description box below. I'm trying to stick to a schedule where I do go live every Thursday evening, but I'm also doing a huge blowout sale today, actually the day you're watching this video. So check the description box, come and hang out. I'm gonna have clothing, shoes, handbags, all of the things. And I would love to see you there. So the color of the week is blue, I remember, because I kept focusing on blue. So all blue tags, $2. Love selling maternity clothing, but I try to pick up like the higher end brands, Isabel Maternity. Um, not one of those higher end brands, but one of my favorite higher end brands to sell maternity is Hatch. H-A-T-C-H. I've only found it like three times. Um, three times in the last couple years. I don't find it very often, but it retails for a lot and it also holds its resale value. I thought of picking up those Ink International Concept um, shorts, but they had some stains on them, so I passed on that. You can see here, I'm really just focusing on the $2 tags. Uh, right now when I'm thrifting, to be fully honest with you guys, unless I can get something at a very, very steep discount, like $2, $5, unless it has a very good sell-through rate or um, sells for a great deep price, I'm not picking it up, you guys. I have a lot of stuff to list, literally. I currently have about 100 items to list right now. So unless I can find things for a great deal, I'm not picking it up. So that's why I didn't pick up those shorts because they would have required stain treating and I probably only would have made like 10 to 15 bucks on that. I sell things year round even though it's April. I love selling. I love sourcing things in the opposite season because a lot of people that aren't resellers, you guys, they're not looking at coats and jackets right now. They're looking at dresses and shorts and tank tops. So I find a lot of good deals this way and I find a lot of high quality pieces too because a lot of people just aren't looking at it. Blank NYC 
Um, I actually picked one of those up recently in another video for myself. Um, I might try to sell it in a live sell, but I don't list blank NYC anymore. Years ago, it used to do great for me, but um, now you can find it at like any TJ Maxx or Marshalls. So I passed on that. I thought this Zara jacket was very cute, um, but it was not on sale. And Zara, I'm really, really, really picky with Zara. Sag Harbor is another brand um, pre-pandemic that I used to send to Thread Up and do pretty good with. I don't think I have ever ever found this brand new with tags. It looks like this retailed for 70, got marked down to 50. I just found this fascinating. I don't know, lately because I've been thrifting so much more this year, I've been finding all of these like older brands that I've never found new with tags before. Uh, remember at the bins we found, was it Liz Claiborne or were we at the thrift store? I filmed it. I think it was Liz Clay. I've never found Liz Claiborne until I started thrifting so much consistently. Um, if you are new here, I have been moving to towards sourcing more thrifted items. In 2023, most of my inventory, well not most, I want to say more than half, was liquidation. And this year I'm going back old school. <laughs> I've been reselling for over 10 years and I started like the majority of those 10 years. Um, most of my inventory was thrifted, you guys. So from the start up until probably like 2020. So I'm moving back towards that. So I've been thrifting a lot, like multiple times a week, you guys. And that's why I have a lot of stuff to list. So this is a brand tool that I pass on. Thank you to those of you that helped me pronounce it. I used to call it Thule. And all of you were like, girl, that is not how you pronounce it. Um, that brand occasionally sold at Anthro. I will pick it up sometimes, you guys. It just sits so long for me. I've literally had a coat from them listed in my closet and on my eBay store for like three years, so I don't know. Um, it really is a style-based brand. Banana Republic is a mall brand I love to sell. If this was $2, I would pick it up, but it was not on sale, so I passed. Like I said, we are being very frugal. Collections by Le Suit, a brand... Um, they do workwear, they do some formal wear that is sold at Macy's, sometimes it's sold at, is it Saks or Bloomingdale's? A couple other um, department stores, another brand that I don't pick up anymore, but pre-pandemic used to do really well for me, especially like they're really nice, unique workwear pieces. They do very nice suits. Um, two-piece suits, skirt suits, pants suits. I always look at anything that's 100% leather. Um, that one had some stains and actually had a really big hole when I went back to, and look at, when I went back, to, oh my god, you guys, oh, the sinuses, when I went back to look at it is what I was trying to say. So ended up going through the entire coats and jackets section. I did look up this brand because it's new with tags and it was on sale for $5, but I couldn't find any sold comps, so I decided to pass on it. I'm assuming it's like a boutique brand or something. I thought about maybe selling it in a live sell, but honestly it did not feel like very good quality. So I, you've heard me say this a million times, just because something is new with tags and it's on sale, even if it's like a dollar, sometimes it's just not worth it, in my opinion, to pick it up. I just leave it for someone else. Maybe someone will buy it for themselves. But as far as reselling, I decided to pass. Guess is a brand I love selling, you guys. Um, doesn't always have the best sell-through rate, but it has a following. People love it, and guess it's still very expensive. They still have a couple uh, like brick-and-mortar stores here in Los Angeles. I was hoping this was blue tag because I love selling Tahari. Um, a lot of resellers pass on it, but it is a very expensive brand retail, and a lot of people buy it on the resale market. That is a workwear brand that I still sell because it's just so expensive. It does take a while to sell for me, but uh, like I just sold a full price sale on eBay for $60 that I picked up on $2 day two months ago. So Tahari is one of those outliers in workwear that I pick up. Melrose Silk. This jacket, it was a bit of a dated style, but it was 100% silk, size 16, 
and the price was $9.99, not blue tag, so I passed just because it was dated. Sell-through rate was not that great, but I did see the lady who was like trailing behind me, literally. I'm, I'm not going to show you guys her, but I was like, oh gosh, she's going to come and take this. And she literally came like she was going to mount me to get that jacket. Um, Proenza. Uh, the brand tag stood out to me, and I thought it was just Proenza. I didn't know... I didn't know that they did a collab with Target. Some of these Target collabs, when they do it with these higher-end brands, can resell okay. Uh, I picked up the Missoni Target collab dress I filmed when I was in Seattle. That is still listed. So just be careful. Look up comps. Some of the um, Target collabs are more coveted than others. So I decided to pass on that one. The lady literally... I turned around to get away from her so you couldn't see her right there, right? She went behind me again, grabbed that Proenza jacket, and is next to me again. <laughs> Sometimes I think people, I used to get creeped out by that. I still do a little bit, you know, only child, like, get out of my bubble of personal space. But I used to think, oh, are they, like, weird? Are they odd? Are they following me? Sometimes I've noticed some people just do that because I think they, like, notice one thing you pick out and that you like they like it and you put it back so they're like oh let me trail this person maybe she's gonna pick out some other good stuff I don't know it's odd friends but that went on on this day for a couple of minutes I moved on to the dresses and I finally lost her off my back loft um I don't know you guys I love selling Ann Taylor it's one of the mall brands like Banana Republic J Crew that I really enjoy selling um, especially the more unique pieces like that dress was unique, but loft doesn't do as well for me. So I usually pass. I see good old LuLaRoe new with the tags there. I finally watched that LuLaRoe documentary on um, Amazon Prime. It's worth a watch if, yeah, just, I don't know. I feel like as clothing resellers, maybe sometimes we should be educated on what's going on with these brands that we resell and that was a very interesting watch if you have seen it let me know your thoughts down below i had no idea the history of lula row and everything that went down and apparently i always thought you guys that they were out of business <laughs> i'm laughing because they are not they are very much still in business for some reason i don't know i just thought because their resale value tanked and I just kept hearing so much drama about it. I was just like, oh, they must be out of business. I, I think someone told me that, multiple people. They're not out of business, friends. They are still very much um, in business. So might be worth a watch if you are interested and or you just need a good watch while you're listing something on in the background. Moved back to the jackets. Like I said, we're going to bop and weave to dodge people and film. I really liked that blue polka dot jacket, but it wasn't on sale and it did have some staining. I've told you guys this before. It's hard to check things thoroughly when you're filming with one hand. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll check things out with you guys and then I'll go back for anything I'm interested in and check for flaws. I really liked this jacket a lot. I liked the print. I liked the color, but I don't know if you can tell, it had a ton of pilling, and I didn't know if that was worth the work to depill. So I decided to pass on that, but that would have um, sold really well for me in a live sell. When I am out thrifting, you guys, I am sourcing for all of the ways that I resell. Live selling, consignment selling, listing myself. So that would have done good in a live sell, but because of condition, I decided to pass. This store has a huge hard goods section let us go and learn together. I've always told you guys I am a novice hard goods seller. I want to sell more and more hard goods. They're just so easy to photograph. They're easy to list. Um, they're a little more work to ship, especially the fragile items. But as for some of the smaller items, I really don't mind. It's just when the things get like bigger, like pots and pans that are delicate, that I get a little more nervous. But little things like this, not too bad. Um, and their hard goods are actually pretty reasonably priced, you guys. So what I've learned with hard goods that if I can't find it with Google Lens, I will look for some type of like marking or like things that have boxes that aren't chipped, that are in pretty good condition like this. I can look it up. Um, this did come up on Google Lens and I found a sold comp just for that dish there for $20. Um, 
and so I ended up picking up the set you guys and I have it listed I will let you know when it sells I love selling holiday decor it's really cute I can't stand that Goodwill like puts the price tag over the like the marking of what the item is it just makes it harder to find so um, I ended up picking up some fine china I picked up a vintage dish uh, I'm trying to think did I film it I don't think I did because like I said what I do is I film one hand then I go back and pick up what I'm interested in but I did pick up that dish that I just showed you this set was really nice um, I found some sold comps for this set at I think it was like 30 to 50 dollars actual sold comps but um, I thought that whole set was $7.99 but then when I took it to the register she was like no uh, every two glasses is $7.99. The pricing was confusing. I ended up putting it back because it was a very large set. Things like this, like from Ross, TJ Maxx, um, I usually pass on. This was really dirty. I thought about picking it up because I actually need it for my office, but it had a lot of dirt and grime in it. Some of that stuff that's um, new, like from TJ Maxx, that's more trendy or, or Ross, I will actually pick up and I have resold. Does anyone know what this is? Is this like a coin dish like where you display your coins or something I don't know anyone know what that was was that something that felt really nice and like real wood is that something I passed on that I should have picked up let me know but I do love coming to the store because it's large for clothing men and women's clothing and they have a huge hard goods section not a lot of uh, thrift stores in LA have such a huge hard goods section I really liked this Christmas Christmas cookie jar um, sold comps for like 15 to 20, but it had some staining. In the okay, friends, this video is getting very long, so <laughs> let's just jump into the thrift haul. I don't know if we're going to go through everything here, but we'll try to go through as much as possible. First up, we have these shorts. The brand is Vitamin A. I don't know if my camera will focus. They're very stretchy, elastic waistband shorts they're ribbed they're thick perfect for the season for spring and summer um and everything in this haul i paid four dollars to four dollars and fifty cents for just an fyi in case curious minds want to know beyond yoga this is a sports bra this is a size large i've sold this brand a couple of times i don't have that much experience selling it some of this stuff you guys i'm going to list some of it i'm going to live sell i think this item i'll try to live sell and if it doesn't sell for the price i want then i will list it <clears throat> but i've sold mostly um mostly their leggings this one is Madewell. This is a Madewell tag I've never seen before. If you guys have seen the Madewell tag where it's MWL, let me know. I've never seen that before. This is a size medium, oversized, really soft, cozy um, sweatshirt, and it's oversized, and I believe it is 100% cotton. This is so soft. Madewell does really good at making things really cozy, I've learned. I personally don't wear the brand a lot, but I've been selling it over the years a lot. Like over the last seven, eight, nine, ten years, <laughs> I've been selling a lot of Madewell. Never personally worn it. I don't know why, because a lot of their stuff feels so nice. Everlane, this is a size extra small, but again, this is, <clears throat> I shouldn't say very oversized, but this is oversized. Really nice, soft, stretchy, long sleeve t-shirt. Sometimes Everlane We'll put the name, like the style name, right here, which I find helpful. But this, this one does not have that. Uh, we'll skip jeans. This is 18. I'm just skipping jeans, you guys, because I don't know. They're just not as fun to me to show you. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't have that many jeans in here. I don't know why. I'm not the biggest fan of, <coughs> you guys, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that every week now we are getting sick because of the little people that live in our house. They have germs. They're like germ carriers and they just bring it back. But um, it's not COVID or anything. We've all been tested for flu, COVID, everything you can think of. They've given us full panels. It's just 
whatever. Um, so I'm not the biggest fan of selling jeans. And I'm not the biggest fan of showing them to you. They're just not that fun. They're annoying for me to photograph, to list, especially female jeans, or I should say women jeans, because, you know, you have to do a lot of measurements. But I actually do really well selling them, so I pick them up. I always tell you guys, I don't have to love what I sell. A lot of sellers, you'll hear them say that. That doesn't resonate with me. If I can make a profit, I'm going to sell it. If it annoys me to list it, I'll probably not pick it up as much. But if I'm selling it very well, I'm going to pick it up. Like just last week, you guys, I sold 10 pairs of jeans. 10! All of them asked for measurements. So. <laughs> All right. ATM which is, oh, what's the full name? Anthony Thomas something. Um, pretty expensive brand, you guys. This t-shirt, I looked it up. The t-shirt retailed for like $90. It's very soft, it's size small, made in Peru. Uh, we'll see what I get for that. <clears throat> You're gonna hear me clearing my throat a lot. This is a Zara size medium. I don't pick up a lot of Zara, you guys. I always tell you that, but this is new without the tags. This is very thick very stretchy very soft this is going to be a live cell piece <coughs> i'm gonna have to get water you guys i should be able to make it now <laughs> mod cloth size medium i have never sold this brand before there's always a time for a first no matter how long you've been reselling very um very very what am i trying to say very perfect for the season it's a springy blazer. It's a size medium. It has little small shoulder pads. And comps on this actually look pretty good. I don't know if I'm going to list that or live sell it, you guys. I'm not sure. We're going to skip the pants because I just don't feel like dealing with the pants. <laughs> I've actually done pretty well selling rag and bone lately everywhere. So when I say everywhere... If you are new here, I sell, I resell multiple ways. I'm a big, big advocate for diversification. So I live sell, I list 10 to 40 items a day. I know that's a widespread, but I work full time. And I also sell things on consignment websites like ThreadUp and The Real Real. I just sold a rag and bone dress on ThreadUp. Oh, I have my ThreadUp consignment pro kit processed if you guys would like a separate video on that let me know i don't want to spend too much time on it or maybe i'll make a short video on it sold for like 90 dollars that i got for five bucks i sold a rag and bone t-shirt and a live sell for like 30 dollars that i paid i don't know i didn't pay 30 dollars maybe like five bucks so and then i listed a rag and bone jumpsuit and it sold on eBay for 120. So Rag and Bone is so hit or miss for me, you guys. It's a very expensive retail brand. This t-shirt retailed for $95. But it doesn't always resell that great. For me, as long as I check comps, the, the it may sit for a while. Like I've had some Rag and Bone sit for me for like two years. But then it'll just randomly sell and I'll get a full price sell. So I don't know. <laughs> Take that information and do with it what you will. Just be careful with this brand. Size small, rag and bone. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I don't know if I'm going to list it or what. Mm. Trying to show you like the pieces that I'm really excited to sell. Because I know this video is super long. This is a Madewell size medium. 100% cotton. Like kind of like a acid wash faded look. I don't know if this is men's or women's. I know they don't make unisex stuff, but I feel like this could be unisex. And at $4 a pop, you can't beat that price. Good old Lulu. I really want to keep this, you guys. I need a new sports bra. Um, and it's my second favorite color. My first favorite is purple. <laughs> it's lightly padded. It's in amazing condition. And it's a size 6. <sighs> Do I keep or not? I don't know. I told myself, you guys, if I got, I told myself if I got 40 listings up two days in a row, I would treat myself to a brand new um, Lululemon aloe or Athleta, whatever I want, a brand new workout outfit because I am in wedding crunch. My wedding is like 60 days away or 65 days away. 
from the day I'm filming this. So I have been working out. And so that's my treat to myself. So I'm like, maybe I should just sell that and put that money towards my new workout outfit. I don't know. Anyways, free people. How adorable is this? Size extra small. Another piece I wanted to keep. Um, if this was a size small, I would try to squeeze into it. This is adorable. I might list this. Um, this was a blogger fave. How do I know when things are blogger faves? I just Google image them, you guys. I do a Google image search on the item and I see like different bloggers wearing it. And I'm like, oh, this was a popular one. So I probably will list that. Speaking of Athleta, I love this top. You're not going to be able to see on camera, but it is kind of like a, has a light sheen to it and it is semi sheer and it's loose fitting. It's a size large. It has a hood. Athleta is not cheap, friends. This retail, this is, I mean, it's not cropped on me. For me, I'm 5'6". It stops like right at my hips. I was going to say for a cropped shirt to cost $65. I looked this up. This retailed for $65. It's not cropped. It's really nice. But Athleta is not super affordable. I thought this shirt was just really pilly. <laughs> Let me show you up close. I don't know if you can see it. But that's just the fabric. Like it intentionally looks like it's just pilly. I forget what this is called. It's free people. It's a size extra small, but you know, free people, free sizing. This could easily fit a large. This is one brand that I honestly don't know why they don't put one size fits most because if you're an extra small, unless you want something super oversized, I feel like it's their sizing is very misleading. Like this could fit an extra, extra small all the way up to a large, maybe even an extra large just depending on your bus size. You know what I mean? Like, like Brandy Melville has no right to say one size fits all. I always say it's one size fits small, but free people, I feel like they could actually get away with that and that would be fine. This is equipment. This is 100% silk. This was my personal shirt that I wore during maternity. I wore it as like a dress sometimes and then when I got really big I would just put on some shorts or something under it I love these shirts retails for a ton I think this retailed for like 250 300 dollars um yeah and it's an amazing condition I never washed it I always got it dry cleaned it's a size medium I feel like if you're like a small or extra small you could even just wear this as a dress I did um yeah soft surroundings I've been having a lot of luck with soft surroundings lately. If you've been watching the Come Thrift With Me, like short videos that I've been posting, I've been selling a lot of their cardigans. This is a size large, made in Peru. Literally looks like it's never been worn. Very soft, very stretchy. Hence the name, Soft Surroundings. This is a J. Crew size large, merino wool. I think this is supposed to be a sweater but it fits me like a dress literally this stops like almost to my knees and it's a beautiful pale pink color with the deep V it's got pockets this is so nice you guys don't sleep on J Crew, friends I always tell you guys that I did a whole video uh oh did we lose a hanger I did a whole video I have to remember to talk when I'm talking to talk to you this way because the mic is this way so when I turn my back I need to remember to turn around I like doing thrift hauls this way it just feels like very classy very put together but then I realize when I'm editing that I talk a lot with my back towards you and you can't hear me so Nikki look at the camera uh marine layer what I was saying was don't sleep on mall brands like J. Crew, Banana Republic marine layer size small this brand has a I don't want to say a cult following but there's a lot of people that love this brand I believe it's a California based brand or it started here in California um very like relaxed casual sustainable brand with really nice clothing that lasts you a long time this one let's see what is it uh 95 percent tinsel no one tinsel no oh it, this is newer this just came out in summer 2022 and i love that they put the style on the tag i don't think clothing i scored this tory birch handbag um, one of the ways I'm always telling you guys to source how I source, I source multiple ways. You guys, I go to thrift stores. I go to the Goodwill outlet. 
I source online, I source from websites, and I also source directly from thrift stores around the country, you guys. Um, I'm going to do a separate video on this, but if you guys didn't know, a lot of thrift stores, consignment stores, have Instagrams, you guys. You can search by hashtags. You can search, like I search hashtag um, consignment store, San Antonio, Texas. If you don't know, I'm in Los Angeles. I don't live in Texas. I search consignment store, Burlington, Vermont. I just think of the places I've traveled to because I travel a lot for my job. <coughs> So I like think of the cities I've been to and I search that on Instagram and there are hundreds, if not thousands of stores, you guys, that sell things on their Instagram page or that have an Instagram page that link to their website. I'm talking like mom and pop thrift stores. I'm also talking like different Goodwills around the country. So I source this from a thrift store. <laughs> the reason Vermont came into my mind is because I sourced this from a thrift store in Vermont, you guys. I paid $10 for this bag. $10. The comps on this bag look amazing. Um, the comps on this bag, pre-owned, are anywhere from like $60 up to $150. $10. Now, I will say I did work out a deal with a manager where I bought uh, a bulk. I mean, she called bulk five purses. I don't think that was bulk. I thought she was going to say like I needed to buy 50 or something. But I bought five purses and it was $10 including shipping. So $50 for five Tory Burch handbags, you guys. And this is in great condition. Tory Burch is a very good seller for me. It does need a little cleaning up, but I mean, it's patent, patent leather. The interior looks really good. This was a steal, you guys. I don't know where else I could have gotten this purse for $10 including shipping had I not reached out to just this like thrift store in Vermont. Uh, let me close my window, of course. My office faces where they pick up the, um, the guy comes to pick up the recycling. So this video is all over the place. But I share that tip with you because a lot of you will comment and be like, well, I don't live in LA. I don't live in Dallas. Like, I can't find the stuff you find. Yes, you can, you guys. It just takes a little bit of work. But the great thing is you don't have to get in your car. You don't have to use gas. You can just get online. Look at um, <coughs> Instagram. Look at consignment stores online and you can find this stuff too and i don't know why more people don't talk about it a couple of people i watch do but i it does it's not as easy as going to the goodwill outlet and finding things but sometimes you can really work out some deals especially if you can buy things in bulk and i'm not talking about liquidation you don't have to buy pallets there are so many places that want to sell you their stuff online that don't have a lot of people coming into their store and that's she told me the manager was like that's why i'm giving you such a good deals because you know we don't get that much foot traffic but i'm hoping to build our online presence so you there are deals to be made no matter where you live you just have to get on your computer start learning start searching so that's why i try to share those tips with you guys i was gonna go through this whole rack but i feel like this video is probably 40 minutes long I know that you guys said you like longer videos, but I think at this point we actually are pushing like maybe 40 minutes. So don't forget to subscribe, friends. And I will be back very soon with more tips, more hauls, more thrift with me's, all the good stuff.